So I've noticed before that basically there's too much sort of dead travel in the pedal. There should be anywhere from 5 to 15 mil of dead travel in the clutch pedal before it actually starts to engage the master cylinder. At the moment I've measured mine and it's about 20 mil. So I'm going to try and tighten that up today. Basically up inside here there's a threaded rod with a lock nut on it and that threaded rod is what actually pushes on the uh, master cylinder. So we'll just have a quick look up in here. It's obviously a bit difficult to uh, find or show things, but... Oh, well, like I say, it's probably going to be impossible to show you, but it would appear that our lock nut is there for sort of decorative purposes at the moment, because it's not actually locking anything to anything. So that's probably why it's been... Uh, adjusting itself perhaps you can see that there's too much slack in that really the clutch master cylinder was in pretty much brand new condition so it looks like they've changed that and where they've um had to and where they've had to loosen it off here at this end they haven't readjusted it and actually tightened up the lock nut so that's going to be an easy fix so i'll put the camera on the tripod and uh we'll time lapse this as i sort of wiggle around underneath the car measuring things and uh tightening up nuts I finally managed to tighten it up. It took half an hour and it was an absolute nightmare. And like I say, there's no room to really access anything in here. The uh, silver piece here houses a big nut. Um, and behind that's a lock nut. The silver piece has a hex on the back of it, which is basically part of the threaded nut that's inside it. And then there's a lock nut on the back. So what you do is you hold the hex on the back of the silver piece with a 14 mil spanner which I only have one of because I'm used to working on European cars where it should be a 15 or a 13 but I have to dust off my 12s and my 14s to actually get anything done on this and uh, so I've got my 14 mil spanner on that and then an adjustable spanner set of 14 mil for the lock nut so you turn the rod until you've got the right amount of free play in the pedal mine's now down from 20 mil to 13 mil they say the minimum's 5 mil and the maximum's 15 so I'm just in the maximum basically I don't want it too tight and it may change anyway but so that's set on 13 or 12 or 13 mil now um so you hold the uh silver piece still with the first spanner and then nip up the lock nut with the second spanner whilst doing a handstand underneath with one's bum in the air and generally being too big to fit underneath here but it's done now and uh, I hope I'll never have to do it again um, certainly not anytime soon but yeah that was an absolute nightmare and I can see why I mean it was probably loose beforehand because it was such a nightmare to tighten up the guy probably just did it up hand tight and then thought I ain't doing that so yeah there we go but obviously as it sort of comes loose and loosens itself off the clutch basically becomes less effective until it'll get to the point where you can't actually actuate the clutch so yeah I'm glad I got that done but that was an absolute nightmare Okay, so I've got the Starlet back up in the air and I've taken the wheels off. Uh, the rear beam had some rust on it. You might remember from an earlier video, this side was a lot worse than the other. Um, I'll try and find some images I can take from that old video and I'll splice them in there so now so you can see uh, what it looked like. 
So I've basically scraped off the worst of the rust and then used some more of that Hydrate 80 on it just to uh, keep what's left of it at bay. It's not as bad as it looked initially. Um, the top layer was obviously quite crusty. But by the time I chipped my way through that, it's really solid underneath and it was just surface rust. So thankfully I don't have to change the rear beam or anything. So yeah, there's still a bit more rust to get rid of underneath um, on the front face of it. So. I'll just give that a quick scrape and put some more Hydrate 80 on it and then all the stuff that's already dried for the past 24 hours I'll, uh, I'll mask it up and give it a spray with some zinc primer um, that should help keep the axle going for a bit more I don't really fancy changing them, they're a bit of a nightmare to get hold of and uh, being as they're all in, you know, they're all about the same age as this uh, they're going to be probably in about the same condition or worse uh, thankfully the um, left hand side that was actually in a lot better condition. There doesn't appear to be anywhere near as much surface rust on the top gusset here. Um, that was all quite clean. There was just a little bit of uh, crustiness around the bottom, which I've removed the best I can and uh, neutralised it with that with that built hamber stuff. So okay, so I've masked up all the areas that needed to be masked up and. Uh, giving them a quick spray over with the zinc rich primer and um, then when that's done we're going to give it a quick uh, spray of matte or satin black just to make it blend in with the rest of it so yeah not too bad the job um, again a bit of preventative maintenance now save it rusting its sort of rusting its arse off and then you end up failing an MOT and then struggling to find one of these rear beams because they're not exactly easy to come by so yeah there we go ready for some top coat so, mask on and uh, grab myself a can of whatever black I could find in the cupboard. Usually sat in black because that seems to cover up everything without showing too much crap underneath if you haven't prepped it as well. Time for a bit more spray across the beam. And now we're off to the far side as well. Well, I've given it a coat of paint, so that's the rear beam, certainly the back half of it done. Overall pretty good. Like I say, I haven't bothered taking off or cleaning the shocks because they're going to get replaced soon anyway. And uh, next time I uh, have to investigate what's going on with the uh, brake drums, I'll certainly sort those out as well. But from what it was to what it is, um, it's perfectly reasonable. So quite happy with that really. Like I say, the panide rod as well, you can see at the back there, that's pretty frilly and a bit crusty. I mean, at the bottom of it over here is probably the worst area. But again, it's been trapped under the car for 23 years, never seen the light of day, and what with the salt on the British roads, you can expect a bit of corrosion on there, but that's going to get replaced with a uh, adjustable item anyway when I lower the suspension. So, I mean, the rear box has been replaced at some point, and uh, you can see the difference there, but yeah, not too bad a job. And... Uh, Certainly looks a heck of a lot prettier than it was. What I'll do is I'll have a clean up of the side arms as well. Um, maybe just give them a quick once over. They don't look too rusty or anything. So side arms of the beam I'll, uh, I'll have a quick look at and uh, see if they need to do it. So I put the bumper back on, it's quite easy really. Just slide the bumper off from the bottom, loosely put in the top three bolts here, then you go around the side. And 
then when you're around the side, there's one long bolt to put up here and that attaches just the actual bumper material with the longest screw, which is basically that just like big self tappers with hex heads. And that goes up into a plastic boss in the car. Then you can slide this black plastic piece here back across and then put in these other two. So that's it really, it's quite simple. Put everything in loosely. And once you've got it all assembled loosely, just sort of nip it up, make sure it's all central. Don't go crazy with the fasteners because I mean, it's only holding a thin bumper on. And these ones go into plastic bosses so you can quite easily round those out. Then underneath, once you've done all that, there's another bolt to put in here. Once you've got that in, there should be a big piece of plastic attached to the bumper that bolts onto there, but my piece of plastic has snapped off, which is why I've got a bolt left over in an empty hole there. And in the corners, there should be some plastic sort of pushing fasteners, really. I believe they are. Mine were missing, so I've just put some cable ties in there to stop the bumper of flapping around too much. It's not the most rigid of items anyway, but that'll do. You can see from mine, there's obviously cracks here from the uh, parking escapades of the previous owner and as such the uh, bumper sagged down here to the, about 10 mil on this side perhaps a little bit less on that side but either way you can see from the cracks that's why it's uh, sagging down in those corners I do need a new bumper you can see there's quite a lot of damage to it I mean if I try and pick out some of the big biffs that are in it but there you go is what it is